Okay. Let's just jump right back into this. No opening skin. geoengineering compounds, but also that these compounds are a contributing factor in the formation of contrail plumes. This is a direct contradiction of the statements that GE had made and confirms exactly what Daryl had stated. In this episode, we are taking the gloves off and highlighting all the fallacies that GE has created with his fucked up straw man while also pointing out the outright lies and misinformation that he is spreading. <laughs> it is highly recommended that you watch episode one. Now, I would like to state that I have given both GE and Daryl a chance to come and represent themselves. At this point, neither one of them has accepted, so neither one of you can say that I haven't been fair. Let's start with revisiting GE's opening argument. The reason why we see more contrails in the sky is because air travel has gone up significantly, especially from the World War II days when contrails were first really uh, observed and were a problem. So the fact that we have more travelers in the skies moving about fits the whole idea that we're seeing more contrails. It doesn't mean that they're spraying, None of this means that they're spraying anything. He has legit no evidence to say that they are. Any given. Wow, that's not even wrong. In fact, this is a rare double fallacy. Let me explain. First, GE has created a straw man that does not in any way address the argument that Daryl has presented. <laughs> This is actually a classic example of the hypnotic bait-and-switch fallacy, or a tactic which uses unequivocally true statements to then disguise a false statement at the end. It's a non-sequitur, and it's therefore invalid. <laughs> also, he says none of this means that they're spraying. Well, this is true. They're not spraying. I guess a more appropriate term would be outgassing, or by combustion, spreading fume through the air. Oh my god, you've done it. You've used a false equivocation to create the coveted triple fallacy. Jet craft are indeed causing geoengineering. This is an undeniably true fact of jet plane aviation. As we can see in this article by the Smithsonian titled, Airplane Contrails May Be Creating Accidental Geoengineering. In this article, they describe how jet exhaust is affecting the way that sunlight reaches the Earth, and how this in turn is causing geoengineering. <laughs> John, it's hilarious how fucking wrong you are, but it gets worse. <laughs> Let us watch as Godless Engineer moves the goalposts and tells us that he knows better than the director of the CIA. Take it away, Mr. Brenner. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive. The National Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion yearly. 
he's using this particular thing right here to say, oh, look, the CIA director is admitting that they're using chemtrails. And this is in no way true because this particular program that he's talking about here is not actually like fielded or whatever. Wow. I've never seen goalposts move like that. So you move the goalpost from no evidence to not fielded or whatever. I don't think you're using that word right. Let's see if you can explain yourself a little bit better here. This is like a plan, at one certain plan, to help divert or absorb some of the solar radiation that hits the Earth to extend the uh, like the the time between uh, effects of climate change due to the solar radiation, to the the heating of the Earth. So basically, and I looked this up today, so I know my shit. Uh, so they use like gaseous uh, sulfur oxide. Uh, not well yes yeah, sulfur oxide but also uh, sulfuric acid which i know that might sound a little scary but oh, fuck me they're using chemicals that do not include these heavy metals and the whole idea behind it is that you mimic what happens during a volcanic eruption and these are already things that are found naturally in the environment when volcanic eruptions happen so they're trying to mimic these natural occurrences of things that get thrown up in the air and deflect solar radiation. And, and we know this because it's happened in the past. This particular like program, if it were to get greenlit or what the fuck ever, would cost about $10 billion a year, but that's like about 20 times less uh, what it would cost to cover you know, the effects of climate change, basically. He's trying to use this right here of a program that's not fielded, that's still being like theorized and modeled and everything like that as to what effect it could have on uh, helping us stave off climate change effects. And it's only like hydrogen uh, sulfate and, and these other things that are naturally thrown up when volcanoes erupt. So look this up today so I know my shit. Uh oh, I beg to differ. So I'm assuming by fielded, you mean that it has not been experimented with live in the field. Well, John, that is completely untrue. Let's bring back in Professor David Keith from Harvard as he explains his new solar radiation management program that did go live in the beginning of 2018. Professor Keith, take it away. Our experiment will be a small balloon payload that weighs a few hundred kilograms. It'll fly about 20 kilometers up in the stratosphere. That's about twice as high as a commercial jet. It will release a small amount, less than a kilogram of materials, and then it'll fly back and forth and measure the way those interact with the background chemistry of the stratosphere. What makes this experiment unique is that there has never been a purposeful introduction of materials in the stratosphere to study the impact this has. Wow, John, that's a direct contradiction to what you just said. Hmm, who should we believe? You, some guy on YouTube, or the foremost experts on the subject, including the director of the fucking CIA? What the fuck, man? Where do you get your information? Who told you this shit? Can you produce one fucking source? Is there any information? that you can show me that says that there is no geoengineering occurring. No, because all you do is plagiarize made a bunk without citing your source. Dude, stop this little fucking thief. Fuck me. Yeah, plagiarize that source material, Chloe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh. Got something on your face. <laughs> wow, that was kind of brutal. But you brought it on yourself. It's one thing to be a complete frickin' retard like Daryl. But you, John, you have two master's degrees. You're a fucking engineer. You're someone I used to look up to, buddy. But not anymore. Your research is weak, your integrity's lacking, and I can't decide. If you're stupid, lazy, or a fucking liar. You sit on your high horse, 
ripping on the dumbest people that you can find just to make yourself look better. Well, come rip on me, buddy. Come defend yourself for deleting my posts, blocking my fucking chats, and fucking hiding from me while you sit there smugly pretending like you're some kind of fucking intellectual. You're no fucking genius. You're a fucking coward. Have fun playing your games, picking on retards. Real men like me have work to do. Suck my balls. Chemtrails on Earth. Chemtrails on Venus. Think I'm out of a plane. And out of my penis. We got chemtrails on Earth.